It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory. Viseo. Yep. Good afternoon. Welcome in to the 2024 U Sports Men's Championship Red presented by Michelob as we get ready for what should be an incredible three days of basketball here on the Laval University campus. Greg Campbell Mocon will be your broadcasting for these next few days. Greg, good afternoon to you. We are now inside the most important part of the basketball season. It is the final eight, and we open up with UCAM against Ottawa today. Well, it's going to be a rivalry game right off the bat. There's three former Ottawa U players on this UCAM team, led by Kevin Civil. I was talking to the Ottawa co head coach, and James Dufferin was saying how, you know, the key to this game is stopping this guy first and foremost in the paint, and then it goes from there. So he's talking about the rivalry. A lot of these guys have grown up playing with one another, and you could talk a little bit about it more, but especially for this UCAM team, I mean, these guys have played with each other since they were kids. So, you know, familiarity breeds contempt. They understand each other. They know where the ball's going. They rely on each other. It's really a brotherhood for some of these guys. Let's start with Ottawa first. Many thought they would have been the OUA champions. They were the kings of the manor for pretty much the entire duration of the OUA season, of course, throughout the regular season. But here they are, not as a champ, but as a regular season uh, wildcard entrance. Well, and the thing is, they were tied with the Queen's Golden Gales in terms of record for the regular season. And then they just ran into a hot team in the playoffs. And for them, that veteran leadership came into fruition days after the loss. And, you know, they talk about this team being a bunch of hardworking guys who come to work every single day. They play for each other. They understand what it takes to win a national championship. And that's a mentality you have to have is once they understood that, you know, Queens was able to beat a couple of teams, they knew their berth was secured. They started to relax a little bit more, and then they knew what the task was at hand. Coming up next, tip off UCAM Ottawa first of four today, and this team will now punch their game towards semifinal Saturday. We'll find out here from St. Foix, Quebec, home in the 2024 U Sports Final Eight, presented by Michelob.
Welcome back here to Laval University, site of the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final Eight presented by Michelob Ultra on CBC. All right, let's dive into it here. How important is these first five minutes as we move in? Of course, these two teams are familiar with each other, playing in the preseason, and they know each other because of recruiting wars with UCAM in Ottawa as well. Well, we talk about the rivalry matchup coming into this. Three former Ottawa GG players on this UCAM roster. But more importantly, I want to see the first five minutes for this GG's team. I mean, they haven't played in two weeks. They got bounced out of the OUA Wilson Cup playoffs early and so for them it was kind of waiting around and scrimmaging at this point so I mean the first five minutes is key both teams in terms of the shooting percentages aren't the greatest and you know talking to James Deruini is talking just about how points have been a premium across Canada this year in terms of field goal percentages we'll see how it plays out the first five. First of four today and we're underway and here's Eli Carrojo who will start this day off a bit of substitution last second here so there came in for Hedara the first launch and that is incomplete and the one and done for UCAM right away. And we'll see both teams have faced a lot of zone defenses this year so I mean in terms of the offensive sets they're well versed in terms of how to attack. Ottawa scored 80 points per game which was number 23 in U Sports and now their first trip in and rejection the first block of the day for Cayo and we see this team the length of this team working out so well they had about four and a half blocks per game in the Quebec conference and that might be an issue for Ottawa early on. Well and the thing is points in the paint are going to be key for both teams and when you see off that first drive right away just good defensive awareness riding out the offensive player in that set standing tall and watching that ball come through and not with a hack. Yeah, Hadara now back in the game. There was an issue with his uniform. Had to be taken off for Hilaire, who got a brief cameo. Here is Lafare, who had the first block of the day. Inside the jungle, back out to Lafare once more. And the Ottawa defense up there. Top three these two teams are transitioning through in the first bullet going for Ottawa, and they're up 2 nothing. And that's where the rebounding battle is going to be key at this point. I mean, when you're talking about struggling to shoot from the field, those easy buckets in transition as a spot up three missed on the play. Yeah, Newton averaged 17 points a game. Right now, UCAM, who scores about 78 points per game, cannot find their sales in the first minute 10 of play from St. Foy. The GGs, a team did not win the OUA, and here is Kevin Seville, the former GG, in transition on a two-on-one, and the teardrop is... No good, rebounded by Seville, and the second by the Cherry is incomplete again. And right now they're 0-4 in the first few trips. I mean, you just see the transition game there. Thought about the three for a moment, but by the time he did that, more defenders are coming back. Then he had to adjust for the short floater he missed there. Otto shoots about 44.5%, which is number nine in the nation. Now looking to get themselves up by four, perhaps. The fadeaway, and the two points going through again for Brock Noonan who had nine points fouled out in the loss to Brock earlier in the playoff run. Well, and that's the thing. When you face Lafarette in the post there, I mean, he's second in the province in terms of blocks with 12 coming into the postseason here as the foul on the floor there on the switch off. But that's what you have to do. He is a lead in terms of ball tracking. You have to understand when you're going to get your shot off. So it may take two or three fakes before they settle for a jumper. Right now, UCAM's in a slow burn of a start. And right now, Ottawa off to a much better start, up 4 nothing with less than eight to go in this first quarter of play. First team foul to Ottawa, back door, and that pass from Carrojo to Hydara was sent back down to Montreal. And this will be the first turnover of the day. And 
UCAM hits about 17 turnovers per game. Ottawa, very clean, number five in the nation at 12 per game. So turnovers might be at a premium in this matchup. Well, and they're active in their hands as well. I mean, they're first in the OUA in terms of steals per game at 11. So you're going to see they're going to be very aggressive in their defensive sets. Ottawa up four, trying to extend their lead. Newton, the lower block with the right. And that's in for another two, and they're up six. They're off to a flyer in the first 2.30. Well, I guess that rust has not been really rusting at all at this point. I mean, they've been efficient here so far, and for the head coach, he's talking about how it's just been efficient practice week here. It's like a normal game week for them. Nothing changes, even though it's a national championship set. Carrojo, the former Gigi, on the byline, and he's knocked over, saved off the foot, and this will go out of play and remain UCAM ball. They will have... Four left on the shot clock, 7.14 left on the game clock. Well, that's just good defensive work there, just driving them baseline and then cutting off that wing the other way, and he had nowhere to go. He hits the deck. Yeah, you kind of trying to find the rhythm in the early going, and have yet to do so. And here is McFadden Jean, a high flyer for the Cité from the center arc. Front iron, another one and done, and away come the GGs. They are thirsty for more points, and here's the reason why. Brock Newton showing the devastation in this early going, and they're up 8 0 with 7.03 left in this first quarter of action. Yeah, just a quick timeout there by Mario Joseph. Just wanting to stop the bleeding here normally, and you know, he's been the coach since 2017, but for this team, I mean, they come into this contest having won their semifinal matchup against Bishops and then beating Concordia. So a little bit of trouble here early. You're watching the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Final 8 presented by Michelob Light. Ottawa 8, UCAM 0. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Welcome back here to St. Foix, Quebec. It is an 8 0 lead for Ottawa. They're off and running. They've looked deep and tasty, and right now, you see today have lacked any taste in the court with no points so far. Well, it's just a, it's going to be a battle of defensive attrition for both teams here. It's going to be a theme throughout this tournament. I mean, you're going to see in some of the upcoming ma matchups, there's going to be elite scores, but. For Mario Joseph, he's talking about this being a team effort in terms of team play and ball distribution. And so far, no one's been able to get going, and they've got that high 2-3 zone and a turnover, potentially. In a near disjointed situation, it will be disjointed. It will be a foul going against UCAM with 6.51 left in this first quarter of play. And you know what, Greg, when you think about it, when you're the opening act of a, a tournament like this, there's always those angst that definitely pops in. It feels like UCAM's not found the rhythm yet, even though Mario Joseph said, we know what it takes to win. We've been here last year losing to Carlton. Well, and the other thing is, too, for a team like this, I mean, they've played together all their lives. So, I mean, the stage is a little different. But, you know, in terms of familiarity, it's not like a bunch of new teammates or a transfer portal where they've been trying to adjust to each other all year. And they're familiar with this building as well from a shooting perspective. I mean, Ottawa's come in here during the preseason as well as that will help their cause off the missed free throws. Gamena missing the two free throws. He shoots about 75%. Here he is on the side out. 6.51 left in his first quarter. Play Ottawa up eight against the Citadel that you can. And you got and the size mismatch right here in the post. And Nick Fadden Jean with the quick hands. Gamena losing that ball. Carrojo cannot get to it. Reloaded by Otu, who now will go for the three. And that's off the heel, another 14 for the GGs. And rebounding might be a big issue here for both teams. And Scott in there and missing that shot is Njok Tajori, who came from Udawe in the strategic ranks. Hydara, and he opens up his account, and they're off with their first two points. And it took them a while here, but they finally break it open. You see Ottawa attack right away the other way. 0-2, denied by Lafarette, his second block of the day. Jean now on the go, all by himself with Gimeta on him, and a giveaway again by the Citadel. Now Ottawa has numbers in their favor, and Jacques Tajori, and that ball goes back to UCAM. 
So a bit of a glitch for Andrew Ottawa as he were a little bit unnerved by this whole process. Well, and it's miscommunication in that opportunity there because you see the body language immediately. They had a four-on-one, and then it became a four-on-two. He decides to call his own number. Not the best-looking shot. He had two guys open in the perimeter pocket corners, but called his own number and a turnover here, and they'll go to a soft, full-court man-to-man press. Now in the game for the Citadin is Quincy Louis Jeune, who played at Ottawa University. And Louis Jeune has led the team in scoring three times. They call him the accelerator when it comes to the offensive woes. And he perhaps could give them a run here down by six. But if you are Ottawa, you're happy with how this has played out for them early on. Well, and I mean, they've done their scouting report as Cole Nugent's also checked into the game for the GGs here. But they've been cutting off the baseline. They've been efficient in the half-court sets here. And they're challenging every single pass here. You see how high he rides them there? Way beyond the three-point line. And now Louis Jeune trying to knock over Newton, who's Bambi on ice for a moment. Hidara had the first two for the Citadin and back out to Cayo. Inside the jungle, going up in for two. They're down by a score of eight to four. Good dribble penetration there, and then a tough looking floater against the defense. They just got moving one way, then the other. Back door, extra pass. Kaula Mali in the game for the first time today. Ottawa trying to negotiate and the quick hands. It will be Ottawa ball with about 10 left in the shot clock, 5.23 left in the game clock. And that's a better defensive set for the team that only allows 70 points per game. That's good for first in their league. Well, was one of the uh, worst three-point shooting teams in Canada at 26% per game, at 46th ranked nationwide. And the off-balance, the geometry perfect on that shot for Brock Newton, who's really been off and running so far for Ottawa. Well, the junior average is 17 points per game, shoots 56% from the field. He's number one in terms of field goals made in the OUA, so they're going to get the ball to him early and often. Yeah, Newton had a 12-game streak of 11-plus points during the regular season. Here they come, Kulamala on the fly, and in at the lip of the cup. And now they're up 12-4. Well, you wonder how long Mario Joseph is going to let this ride here in the first half of this first quarter. And it's just been Ottawa controlling the tempo on both ends of the court. From the 45, Louis Jeune. Front iron and a rebound right there for the, C uh, for the GGs. And uh, Montreal shoots about 33% from three-point range. And they've not found their distance yet. Well, it's a good-looking set there. Good extra pass, just like you said, partner. They're just, they have not been able to find the back of the rim yet. Here's Stajek. By way of Waterloo, Ontario, scoring eight a game in the quick hands by the Citadin. Here they come on a two-on-two. -two. Louis Jean with the Euro. And one. So count it there because he gets inside that restricted area as he's tried to stand vertical there in the junior and Cole Newton. You see some of the fans here. Quite the elaborate headwear going on, but good transition play there, taking it to the hole. <laughs> And I mean, that's what you have to do. If you can't find it from the outside, those quick outlet passes, fast break, and you know, that's how you grow up playing the game of basketball, easy points, and no one points are at a premium, every basket counts. Yeah, this is a team, Christy Louis Jeune, who uh, this past regular season had scored about 12 a game, 70% free throw shooter. This season, the Citadin, not that great from the line, only 67% which was number 40th in the nation. They shot 53% on this very court here at Laval University in a loss earlier in February. Well, you see their 8-0 run to start it now. It's been a 7-0, 7-4 run for the Citadel on the other side. So they're starting to settle into this game. A game of runs, and here is one player who can run it. And that ball, tough shot. Gimeta couldn't get that rebound up in the air and knocked Citadel player down. And the sky blue will get the ball back as Hidara got hit in the ear. I mean, you want to look at that crossover to begin with. That was so low. So that adjustment even to catch that ball and fire it off was outstanding, I think, in terms of the actual player control that way. Ray Campbell Mocon here on this first day inside 4-12-7 lead. And here's Hidara splitting through. And you can see the game plan for Michael Joseph. He's changed it now where they're attacking the rim than before. And now this time it's going to be Thomas Armstrong that's called on the foul there on the block. But attacking the paint and then again getting them sliding, thinking about things, and aggressiveness is key at this point. So that's one way when you don't have to think about the shot you're going to take and it's just put it in the hole. You know, there's a lot less to think about. And now they're rewarded with another trip to the line. Five times, Adair led the team in scoring, had 12 against the Gators, and he had 26 points in a regular season campaign. Hadara, by way of George Mason University, played his uh, stage up ball at Dawson College down the road in Montreal. And Hadara will make it a 12-9 lead for the GGs with 3.51 left in this first quarter. 
tail of the tape right now. What's your scene from these two teams? I mean, in terms of the defensive attrition here, they're, they're both making it tough when they get into the lane. It's just how much separation can you make as a playmaker and as a shooter? 0-2 feeling the pressure. Switch of play, cool them off from the 45. Splash! First three of the day. And they hit it about 27% from distance. Shot 45% against Queens this season. He's a 31% shooter from the land beyond for the sophomore and that's a good looking shot there and it finally might calm him down a bit one touch pass here's Louis Jun Steven Diaz in the game today one of the top three point shooters in Canada for the Citadin here's Hidaris three bullseye and they get a three back and now a 15-12 lead for the GG's well that's a half-hearted close at the end of the day and hand down man down these two dynamite teams going at it right now and this first quarter play, Ottawa's left from start to present. Kulamala, drop pass coming through the lane. The teardrop denied. Louis Jun coming in with the block. And away come the Citadin. Cole Newton blocked on that shot back out as they have five behind the protractor. And that ball deflected away by Kulamala as Diaz was ready to load that shot up from the corner pocket. Well, they averaged three and a half blocks per game as a team. And they're already right basically at that betting average here in the first quarter alone. Laforet with a pair of blocks as well earlier on in this contest, but everything being contested right in that paint area. You see they're going to stay with that 2-3 zone right now. We'll see what the zone does, if they can get this going through here. Another three. Splash! Hydara has felt it, and now they're back to parity with 228 left. Yeah, and the bench is responding as well for the 30% three-point shooter. I mean, they're starting to find their rhythm here, and it's a different tone of the game now, energy-wise. See a little over aggressiveness on the play there. Get called for the ticky tacky foul. And right now you can see how the initial boil was a bit of a slow simmer for Montreal for UCAM right now. But for both Ottawa and UCAM, we've talked about it before. They played each other. The players know each other very well. A lot of these guys from Ottawa play in Quebec in the Siege of System. So this might come down to knowing your opponent from pickup games from past tournaments that we're seeing so far in this first seven minutes of play. Well, it's funny you make that point. It's all those little games you didn't think mattered when you were a kid, and now knowing those tendencies over the years, like you said, may be the difference here. 0-2. Back out. Beautiful pirouette. Jumper is short whistle, and that's going to be a shot clock violation going against Ottawa. And twice he had 20 turnovers in a game this past regular season, and right now they've only scored seven since the timeout called by Joseph. Well, on the turnover game, I mean, they're third in the OUA in terms of turnovers the game at 12, so they do a good job protecting the ball and their elite def defensively, but a couple unraveling sets here, and again, we'll see what the adjustments are between the quarters for both sides as, you know, they had an 8-0 run to start, and now we're square at 15. Because you can't get their first lead of the day. 0-2 watching Louis Jean on the near side. Open three for Kayo. Nylon, big shot for him. Now they get the first lead of the day. And that's all set up by the sweep there and an authoritative take to the rim because they've been doing that a lot. They start to collapse, open three. And Jock Jory from center arc, right down Bank Street, and we're back to 18 again. Well, he got his Lafayette thinking that he was going to drive into the lane off that left-hand side there, and then that separation, just about a two feet, we'll call it, was enough for him to not even hesitate. Hydara with the right. Can't finish in that one. A 3-0-1. Kulamala pushing the pace. 0-2 left wing. And they're back in the pole position of, two, of a two-point lead. And that's what you have to do. But look at the Sid in the other way, pushing the pace as well. From the corner pocket, missed by Hydara. Rebound, new 14 for the Citadel. Kayo in the game, a super sub for them. Louis Jeune, jab step. Backing up from the center arc. And that is incomplete. Diaz couldn't get the rebound. Kulamala does. And with 52 ticks left, Ottawa could extend this lead up two to maybe more. Well, Newton's got to be careful. He didn't box out Diaz there. He got lucky his teammate bailed him out. Here is Brock Newton. Left to right using his deltoids. And that is a one and done for Ottawa. And now you can will play maybe for two for one with 35 seconds left. Now it's been the same spot they've been going to on that right side of the block every time in the half court. And it's his look. He goes left once and then he tries to finish off that right hand. Kayo, here is Louis Jun. Watched by Injok Chidori. Hadara. Diaz from the flats. Diaz up, denied out of bounds by Newton. And Ottawa hits about three and a half blocks a game. 
And you see the length, the telescopic arms of these players. If you go through the mountains, you might get the ball denied. Well, that's uh, actually off the city then last at the end there, but that's one way to make up for it for the junior. You can't convert on one end, you stand tall defensively the other way, and they'll have the last possession in the first quarter. 50.3 left in this first quarter play. Uh, a sumptuous last five minutes of play we've had with these two teams and a two point for Ottawa. And here is Stajic with it. The last roll of the dice in this first quarter of play. It's been a stormer effort for both teams. Now here's Kulmala, who's a three-point hitter. Stajic, five left on the game clock. Trying to get themselves a, a clean shot. That isn't a clean shot, and that is recovered off the Abdallah miss by Diaz. So we're through one quarter of play. Ottawa's up 20 to 18 here from the 2024 U Sports Nationals presented by CBC. I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. CBC is Canada's home for university sports action. The nation's top university women's basketball teams are in Edmonton this weekend for the 2024 U Sports Final Eight presented by the Western Edmonton. Afternoon session tonight's Constellation Semifinal Games are exclusive to CBC Sports YouTube channel. And tomorrow night, catch the championship semifinal beginning at 8 p.m. on CBC Gem, CBC Sports.ca, and CBC Sports YouTube. So the women's will get going in Alberta and Edmonton. A little colder out there than it is over here. But your first half thoughts, first quarter thoughts here, who's got the momentum going to quarter number two? Honestly, partner, I think the first two minutes is going to determine what's going on here because there's been a number of cases. Ottawa came hot out of the gates right away, and despite not having to play for the last couple of weeks, didn't show any signs of rust, but then the seed of end find, start to find the rhythm. I think really it's the transition game because for the GGs, when they lost in their quarterfinal 81-58 to Brock, they were outscored 43-13 in the second half. Biggest thing, though, they lost that rebounding battle 41-23. So who controls the boards here in the later stages of the first half is going to be a long way in terms of determining who has the lead at the half. Here's due to deny the game. Lafayette with a hat trick of three. It's a missed shot coming in from the flats, and Gimeta couldn't get that cleanly. And now utter chaos back to Louis Jean all by himself trying to attack the agenda. And that is a one and done for UCAM. Here comes Ottawa the other way. We go from one end to the other end from the near side transition. And a miss from Gimeta, another rebound right to Ottawa, and a reload for the new 14. You like that look, though, because they had that a couple times in the first quarter there, and they decided to go one on two into the paint. Newton, a little forearm action, rebounded by Diaz. Great no call, though. They've been allowing that both ways so far in this game, and they're not selling the flop in terms of taking it. A lot of buccaneering action by both teams. The panache for threes has been very delicious for most so far in this first quarter to the second period of play. Here's a three for Seville. Splash! And they're back up one. Kevin Seville, the former Ottawa Gigi, coming back with his first three points. Well, the league MVP, the first team all-star, averages 13 points per game as a three on the other way missed by the Gigi's there. But how long can you keep this guy down is the real question. Stajek missing that three. Here's Louis Jean on the gallop. Behind the back he goes. And here's Diaz with it. He can shoot them. And he misses it on the back heel out of bounds. This will be UCAM ball. Last touch by Otu, who was not happy about that call. And so we're seeing a bit of a 
game plan now from UCAM, right? Run it, run it, run it, and find your open threes. Mario well, Jose's looking at that right now. Well, and those threes are being opened up because they did the early work in the middle stages of that first quarter, going into the lane and attacking, getting a couple free throw opportunities. Again, that just starts to collapse your, collapse your defense naturally. See what they run out of the set here. Diaz trying to get around and back over to Carrojo's three. Got a, got, got a hand on that right at the end there. Thought about the shot too late, and then he was able to alter it. Gimeta in the paint, stopping, popping. Back heel, rebounded by Carrojo, and still a one-point lead for UCAM going back the other way. Hydara. Here's Seville looking for a second three. Splash! Kevin Seville is an assassin from long range. Timeout called by Ottawa. 8.09 left in this first quarter play. UCAM is up 24-20. You're watching the final eight on CBC Sports. celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline immersing you in the game like never before bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans we deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time proudly Canadian we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world stage ISI live be there Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Welcome back here to the 2024 Green Shield U Sports Men's Basketball Final Eight presented by Michelob on CBC. Great Campbell Mo Khan here on this Friday afternoon. The first meal has been very delicious so far. It took a little bit of a while for this game to get going here. And what's the key for Ottawa now to get back in this game? Because the three-point shot has been the calling card for UCAM. Well, the calling card for them on the other side was getting Brock Noonan going on that right side of the post. But he just hasn't been able to beat money after a solid start to the first quarter. Here's Stajak. 0-2 from the corner pocket. Side rim, rebound right to Carrojo. Stolen by Stayak, a new 24 for Ottawa. Can he punish them? No, they won't whistle in the play. As Seville size 10s right out of bounds. And Newton runs onto the deck there. He gets away with a push off there on the offensive rebound. But at this level, I mean, we're going to see it for multiple teams. When all these teams are so good defensively, if they take away your number one or number two scoring option, do you have that tertiary score that can get it going? 0-2. He misses that three up in the air and clean up an out six and one. Get meta. And he might be a problem with his size. He is definitely a dreadnought out on the court for Ottawa. Well, they're not known for their offensive rebounding. They have 10 a game. That's 10th in the OUA. But again, the rebounding margin is something for this team to focus on. As I mentioned just before the end of the first quarter, they're out rebounded by 18 in their quarterfinal loss to the Brock Badger. So it's a point of focus, I'm sure for James DeRuin and the team over the last couple weeks. This is a team that had two games of 50 rebounds or more, and then on the flip side, only 22 against their crosstown rivals, Carlton Ravens. So it's either feast or famine, and right now they're feasting on that play down by one. Hydara, watched by Gameta, who's been the hot hand for Ottawa in the second quarter. Louis Jeune from the near side. And that rims out, rebounded by 0-2, and a one and done for UCAM. But you're saying because of those threes, how much they have to start respecting it, and then a late collapse on the pocket three there. Or, or, sorry, my apologies, off the wing. Pocket, same thing. You never know, right? Uh, yeah. The vocabulary is very immense for you, Mr. Campbell. Here is Newton from the center arc against Louis Jeune, using his deltoids in the jungle back out from the center arc again. 
off the rim, rebounded by Hidara. So Ottawa coming up empty in that three-point shot. Well, and one of the things I was talking to, to Ruin before the game is about the psychology of the three-point shot. And he talked about how it's been a struggle for teams to shoot across the Can West this year. But there's such an emphasis from a young age on these guys being able to clip the three-point shot. I'll get more into it later on. Switch of play. Here's Louis Jean again. Three left in the shot clock. Stripped away by Stajak. And here comes Ottawa. Down by one. They can get the lead back on a converted field goal. And they are hunting for points. Sayak. That was Splash. pretty. That was pretty. He, he sized him up. He knew he was backtracking two steps the other way. And then just a slick right hand behind the back there and a pull up three. Cold blooded there. Right down King Edward Street in Ottawa. And now you, Ottawa U is back up two over UCAM as we are in the thick end of the six minutes of play left in this first half. Larry Jeune trying to find a cutter. He does in Carajo from the elbow. He's been quiet so far. Ottawa's done really well with the robust defending. Here's Stajak the other way. One touch pass. Fine points at his finest. O2 on the cleanup, and they're back up by four. Well, that's tic tac toe, but that's set up by Gometa with the active hands in the lane there. As soon as he went to sweep, just a hard little pick from the backside leads to the transition bucket. 7 0 run for Ottawa. Seville, point number eight, and they're down by two. Yeah, late close there at the end by Colton Newton in the junior, and he, he's just too an elite a scorer, and he knows these guys inside and out. You can in Red, Red Ink down by two in his first quarter play. Newton, tough play, better finish, and they're back up F by four. And Hadera had a hand on it on the backside, but you see they're switching up where that look starts now on the left hand block side, but he keeps working back to that right hand. Jean's three. Off the mark, too much depth on that shot. Recovered by Newton. Here comes Ottawa the other way, trying to extend the lead of four. 0-2, and that was almost lost momentarily. Seville on him, eyeball to eyeball. That's how you box out, though, folks. For all you young kids watching, how Newton just boxed out that last sec to clear the board is basketball 101. Stajak against Carajo. Stajak. Oh, he almost bamboozled with Carajo on that play. It remains Ottawa ball with about four left in the shot clock. Well, the issue is Carajo has the length at the end of the day, so no matter how low he brings that, when he's got to go back up to the apex, the wingspan of Carajo is going to win nine out of ten times as he gets substituted off the court. And right now with four left in the shot clock, what is in the menu of options for Ottawa U? Newton up in the air. Find its way through. That's a missed shot. Rebounded by Jean off the miss from Newton. Brock Newton, that is, who's had a cold second quarter. And here is Luis the other way. Down by four. Seville. He's feeling it. A gem amongst the crown jewels. And they're down by one. Uh, there's nothing civil about what he's doing to this defense right now. He is just torching them from both sides of the court right now. Yeah, Mario Joseph told his former Ottawa guys, it can't be personal. we got to be a team effort here against a very good Ottawa team. And here's Stajak. Looking, fade away, and that is what you call textbook finish by him. Ottawa back up by three. Well, they just got to continue to share the rock, and they've got to get their primary guys going. But both sides talked about it as a point of emphasis. They need to get guys open looks outside their primary and secondary scores. Louis Jean, tough shot. Rebound right over to Kulamala. And here come the Gigi's the other way. They have not slowed down in transition. Every set there, and a good seal there. Wow. Newton, acrobatic and emphatic on the geometry, and they're back up by five. That's great execution there. He knew he had the size mismatch, and he puts that right foot out and extends over him without fouling to grab that ball. That was very impressive. Using the dark arts of basketball in that play. I mean, shout out to the athletic team that's been training these guys in the offseason to be able to get that kind of shot off. Any of that type of workout program. Louis Jean. He's got the workout in him, and he brings it back down to a three-point lead. Three, uh, and, uh, I mean, partner, we're, we're right by the gym here in Laval. I mean, between games, maybe tomorrow morning you can join me yeah. for one. I, you know, I took two days off the gym. I feel like I've lost 10 days worth of not working out. Here's a Jock Tajori up, off the window, and in, back up to Ottawa, 36-31. That's tough. That is just tough. That's, a, that's great defense, and that's just better scoring execution. Lafare. And he gets fouled and will go to the line as a man who scored eight points a game, a 7% free throw shooter, and no more for his defensive acumen than his offensive uh, ability. Now at the line, and it could come down to free throws here. We've not had many free throws in this first half, and it might come to that one or two shots that could be the difference in the third and fourth quarter. Well, and we saw this, I mean, having done games in the Can West all year, there were opportunities that I saw personally where those, those free throws add up over the course of the game. 
So even though it's the second quarter, as he goes good on the first, you know, three, four, five, six points here and there, it just starts to run its mark. And for a team that shoots 67% from the line, I mean, the numbers don't favor them. So every single set here is going to be important. It's been a powerful outlet of points right now for these teams. And a three-point lead for Ottawa, 2.50 left in this first half. The momentum is still up in the air, would you imagine right now? Uh, I mean, it, it's back and forth, and you talk about basketball being a game of runs, but now it's more back to the GG style of play, which they've been pushing the pace anytime they've got a rebounding situation. It's just can they establish that paint presence consistently as they free up Nuna on the right side. Kulamala, who played his stage up ball at Vanny College. A few Vanny guys here we'll talk about through the course of day one. Here's Kulamala again. Five up in the shot clock. Back heel, rebound right to Hydara. And here comes you Cam the other way. Carajo. Once going to make Spanish John. The telepathy was not there between the two players. A turnover by you Cam. And can Ottawa punish them on this possession? Good recovery defensively, too. So now they'll go into that half court and they're going to call for the high screen for Newton. And Dr. Dory coming through the lane with the left to the right off the window and in. And he's a player who is definitely quite exquisite out there. Well, and you see Newton there with kind of a touch screen in that situation, not right, laying a hand on the body there. That's just enough separation. Hydara back out again. He's got 11 left in the shot clock. Lafare on the end line. From the flats, Carrojo reload. And he wedges the ball, and that will stop with 140 left. That was a good job, though, by finding himself in the pocket corner there for Carrojo as he knew his man was driving baseline. And a good patience to go with the pump fake there. Just the wedgie, not, not a fun one when you get one as a kid, not fun when you see it in the basketball I court either. One, so I don't know anything with the wedgies out there. I might say if I administered the wedges, but I know people who have gotten wedges, and that was a shot that did not go to uh, Carrojo's liking. Did you have older brothers? I did not. Ah, that's Thank why. God I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's why the administration side of it. <laughs> Great Gavin Mocon here. Late first half. It's a five-point lead follow over UCAM. And it feels like right now the heat map for UCAM has been behind the arc so far today for the points. Here's Lafare. He's got eight left in the shot clock. Defended double team by Newton. And way with it is Kulamala the other way. Kulamala. Going up over Lafare and does not get the desired end, end product on that play. And there's a whistle on the court, and this is going to go back over to Ducam. Oh, be a rebounding foul there. That's the fifth in terms of the situation for the GGs in that case. Well, I think both teams are in the mood right now for attacking right now. Well, and that's, that's why when points are at a premium as they go to the 2-2-1 two, two, full court press here, it, you got to move the ball quickly here. It's two, three seconds. You've got to find a guy cutting to the lane. So it's soft. So they just want to set him up there before they drop into a high 2-3 zone. 70 seconds left in this first half. Carajos, three. Front iron. Rebound. Lafare in the trees. And recovered by Ottawa. And here come Newton and the boys. Well, there's an emphasis on that wing three right now, not allowing them to have it. Their pocket corner was open there, but a quick contest in the high 2-3 zone the other way. And Jacques Tejore, he missed that completely. And this is forced out, and this will be Ottawa ball with 47.1 left in this first half. Well, that's what happens when you have a guy like Lafollette just sizing you up each time, and he might be in the heads of the GGs right now defensively at this point, as everything for them has been not easy going. As Late substitution. Looks like we're going to have a timeout called on the floor by the GGs with a five point lead and 47 seconds to go in the first half. Timeout called on the court. It's a 38 33 lead for Ottawa over UCAB. Stay tuned. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Final Eight from the Bal Quebec from on CBC Sports.
Welcome back here. CBC is Canada's home for University Sports. This weekend, CBC Sports presented presenting breathtaking moments of youth sports track and field from the University of Manitoba. Coverage of championship Saturday begins tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, exclusively on CBC Gem and CBC Sports.ca. Track and field from the lovely University of Manitoba campus. And right now on the St. Foy Laval University campus, site of the 2024 Men's Nationals presented by Niccolo. It is a 5.8 for Ottawa with 43.8 left in this first half. You see him right out of the timeout. They're trying to go back to their star in the junior in Newton, who averages 17 points per game, 56% field goal shooter. Back on possession, 10 left in the shot clock. Here's Newton. I guess Lafare, kick out to Kulamala. Four left, Kulamala with the left, and that might have been deflected by Lafare, who's been everywhere like a pogo stick. Up here for Caillou, one touch pass. Jean couldn't get to it, Kulamala does, as he propels that ball out of bounds. UCAM ball with 29.3 left. And there were a couple instances in that first quarter where the seats of then were a little slow in transition, but since then, both teams have put it as a point of emphasis. A timeout called on the floor by Mario Joseph. They want to talk it over with their last possession in the first half. So how do you look at it from UCAM's perspective? Uh, last roll of the dice perhaps on the offensive end. They're down by a score of five. So it's not out of range. It's still within earshot of Ottawa. Well, I mean, the biggest thing is whether you make it or not at the end of the day, what do you do defensively on the other side? Because the GGs have an opportunity. But it's been the Kevin Civil show for the most part this afternoon to begin with. I mean, number of wing threes already. He's their premier scorer. In terms of getting other guys going like Adair and that, I mean, he's a fifth-year senior. He averages 12.6 points per game. That's seventh in the province. So, I mean, the, the looks start with civil, and then it's how do they collapse defensively, and do you make the right basketball IQ play? That's the voice of Greg Campbell, Mo Khan here on this Friday afternoon. We got the first of four today. We got four tomorrow, three on Sunday. It's always the first game. That's so tough for teams, regardless of the 1 p.m. game or the 8 p.m. game. They all say the same thing. You get past the first game, it's a lot easier to just kind of breathe and enjoy the tournament. Well, and then you wonder for the other teams that are playing after this. So, for example, for the Queen Golden Gales and the uh, Winnipeg Westman, I mean, they face the winner of this matchup. So, I mean, they have their own game that's upcoming right after this on CBC, but they also have to keep in mind the scouting department what each team may face moving forward. Yeah, Queen's had a rather boring ending to their uh, Wilson Cup. I mean, the bank was open late. Not supposed to be on a Saturday night, but it never, was. Never, never. Back machines are open now. Here's Caillou. fighting on the inside, too, with Newton and Follet. Lafray, double team by Kulamala. Back over comes Cayo. Tough shot, better finish. They're down by three. Ten left, clock is rolling. Here's Kulamala for the last action of the first half. Good job giving you what the defense provided. Kulamala, and that is going to be a violation, and it goes back to UCAT with 4.8 left. And they have a chance to get this down to one or maybe tie that halftime. Well, they only, again, they only average 12 turnovers a game, so they're good at protecting a two for one the odd way. Hydara, Laforet, and that had too much spice on the pass with 0.5 left. So we've seen Hail Marys, we've seen it in the Wilson Cup. And now this could be Hail Mary for Ottawa with 0.5 left. To go. I think they're good just to bring it in there. So they'll take a knee, and at the end of the first half, it's a 38 35 lead for Ottawa over UCAM. Here you're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's National 8 from the Lyle University on CMC Sports. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all.
They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Welcome back here to the 2024 U Sports Nationals here from Laval University. Great Campbell, Mokon, halftime. 38-35 uh, lead for Ottawa over UCAM. And early on, Ottawa was flying out of the gates, 8-0 lead. And we both thought, oh my goodness, could this be a real lie by Ottawa? But UCAM came back and made some shots. I mean, it's a testament to this team and the resiliency. I mean, especially when there's fuel in the fire, knowing that there's three former GGs on this roster and Kevin Civil, the league MVP, first team all-star selection, fourth in points per game coming into this game is the reason why they're still in this contest. And you look at the other side, it's been Brock Newton. They've been trying to find him in the paint. I think the question becomes for both teams is who's going to get their shot off more frequently. And then the other side, we've seen scrambles on both ends. It's, it's protection at the ball at this point because, again, the margins are so thin. And to quote Mario Joseph, we're very even teams. The difference is one of us plays in the Resc, one of us plays in the OUA. And only separated by two hours. And that's another reason why geography-wise right now, uh, we'll talk about the second half going towards that point, but you mentioned Kevin Seville, who had a great first half. Ottawa, the Newton boys were quite the dominant force, but what step up from Ottawa to be a key number going towards quarter three and four? Well, I mean, guys like, I mean, Kevin Alto is a fifth year senior. He averages 13.5 points per game. But I mean, really, it's when Newton's distributing that ball, can you get someone else going at this point or Kulamala, who's a sophomore that averages 10.3 a game? Well, that's the end of the first half here. But don't forget, though, we every year U Sports presents a series of major honors to celebrate the student half this year. And in particular, the major accomplishments for each sport. And here are the nominees and winner of the 2024 U Sports Rookie of the Year Award. Men's Basketball Rookie of the Year are a nomination for the trophy Dr. Peter Mullins presented à la recrue de l'année en basketball masculin U Sport 2024 des Sports Universitaires de l'Atlantique from the AUS, Coet Thomas, St. Francis Xavier University, Université St. Francis Xavier, du Réseau du Sport étudiant du Québec from the RCQ, Willem Mwanza, Université Laval University, du Sport Universitaire de l'Ontario from the OUA, Xavier Spencer. Université Carleton University, et de l'Association West Canadienne. From Canada West, Easton Thim, University of Saskatchewan, Université de la Saskatchewan. Le lauréat du trophée, Dr. Peter Mullins, décerné à la recrue de l'année en basketball masculin, U Sport F. The winner of the Dr. Peter Mullins Award for U Sports Rookie of the Year in men's basketball is Xavier Spencer, Université Carleton University. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hey, U Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profite of the promotion of the semaine of the collection Nike Team. 
Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Welcome back here to the 2024 U Sports Men's Basketball Na National Championships from Laval University on a beautiful Friday afternoon in the Quebec city capital. And we are looking forward towards the second half, which has been a very sumptuous first half. As Greg Calvin and I look at the uh, first half stats, and look, it, it is pretty much not even, but they're almost neck and neck in certain departments today. Well, I mean, and you look at you start with the field goal shooting. Both teams just a hair under 44 percent. The GGs at 43.6. The City Den at 42.9. The three-point shot 30 percent for the GGs at three of 10 versus six of 17 for 35 percent. But as I mentioned, just going into the half, there, who takes care of the ball better at the end of the day? Because the Cedarden have turned the ball over 11 times. That's led to 16 points for the GGs, and really, you could say that's the difference in the game for Mario Joseph, his team in the first half, compared to five turnovers for the GGs have accounted only for six points. And you think about it right now, right? You mentioned that points off turnovers, uh, a plus 10 for Ottawa in that first half. Uh, clean basketball, right? I look at the assist numbers in this situation right now. Coming into this uh, tournament here, you can hits about 16 a game. Ottawa about 16 and a half per game. And you think about Ottawa, they had 20 against Nipissing during the regular season here. So could that extra pass be a key number here going towards the second half? Well, that's the key thing is when Newton has the ball in that post, when he does that kick out pass off to the wing, it's can they make that second and third and fourth pass in some cases where you're passing up an okay or good shot for a great shot th at this point. I mean, you look at the assists in this game so far, the GGs have seven compared to the seed then have five at this point. But I mean, the points in terms of the bench points have been huge for the seed then. They've got 22 so far compared to just five for the GGs. First of four today, we got Queens, Winnipeg. We got Laval, University of Victoria, and probably in terms of the numbers here, the most even matchup is going to be Brock against Dalhousie, uh, East Coast versus West Coast in that situation in terms of the center, uh, center of Ontario right now. But we got to cover from East Coast to West Coast. But right now in this game here, it's almost a coin flip. Well, and that's the thing. I think every game is going to be dangerous. And it was something you and I were talking about before the broadcast even started that we're so used to some of these teams being on the national stage, like the GGs cross town rivals and the Carlton Ravens looking at Toronto Metropolitan University. I mean, those teams have been staples for the last decade at the national tournament, as has Dalhousie, who will be playing later on. But most power Ontario schools that you're used to seeing not in the tournament this year and presents a different feel coming into this weekend because everyone's got their person or their team they might think that's going to stand out. But really, at the end of the day, it's one game at a time. It, re it really is. In the sense I got from talking to the staffs here, uh, it's open. It's an open tournament because in years past, look, Carlton's the kings of the mountain. They're the pinnacle of what everyone wants to be as a national. I mean, player. James Darun has to hear about it every well, season, it's not right? not far away, you know, yeah. down the road from where they are. But in this tournament, though, many think UVic are the favorites, but it, look at last year. They lost early and didn't win the gold, right? So we'll see what happens here going towards day number one. It is UCAM, it is Ottawa. It is a 38-35 lead for the folks from Ottawa as they're up by three going towards the second half. Stay tuned here. You are watching the 2024 U Sports Men's Nationals at Laval University on CBC Sports. It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo.
Welcome back here to St. Foix, Quebec, on the edge of the Quebec City area on a beautiful Friday afternoon. And we get ready for second half action. Uh, great Cam Mocon. It's been uh, quite the uh, unique chess match for these two teams. And now, look, we spoke about it at halftime. I'll ask the same question as I did at the top of the broadcast. How important is that first five minutes for either side? I mean, how do they respond is the better question for both sides coming out of the half now that they've seen each other a little more here at the national stage. I mean, for the GGs, they started on an 8-0 run and then the game started to settle within itself. But you look at Brock Duden, 14 points, 18 minutes of action. He's doubled up the second leading scorer on his team and Justin Tajora at seven points. Then you look at the other side. I mean, Civil's led the way with 11 points. He's 67% from the field, but Adara has got 10 going as well. And then Samuel Kale at seven. So they've got the scoring a little more distributed here, but I mean, both teams were really pushing the pace and we talked about transition and turnovers and really we mentioned it before, but those 11 turnovers by the Citadel have converted to 16 points for the GGs. And I think that has been the difference in this game so far. And it's been margin thin errors between both sides well we know the winner of this game will move on to the next round of the tournament here from St. Foy and uh, again Quebec has uh, hasn't won a national title since 98-99 the Bishop Gators it's been a long time for them the only way has been feasting on national titles Chris and Carlton so one of these teams will have their hopes still alive and the other will have their dreams shattered. Well, the other team playing later this evening from this province taking on the number one overall seed in the Victoria Vikes. And it's going to be a dangerous matchup for the Vikes. I mean, Laval's got size, they've got age, they've got experience. And Uvic has immense talent. Uh, let's just call it the Mafia. You don't want to have them come after you. No, you don't. And here's the first possession for the GGs. Stajic with it. Nowhere to go. Cul-de-sac. Newton, and that's shot clock violation. Uh, Mario Joseph is fired up on the sideline there after an outstanding first defensive set by the Citadel coming out of the half. Yeah, Mario Joseph played his ball in the can west, and now here he is coaching for the next generation. A couple of Brandon Bobcats alumni that are head coaches in this tournament too. Quite interesting to see. And there's a lot of tentacles with these players and histories where they come from. And here is Kevin Seville, who has history with Ottawa, watched by Steinick. Seville on 11 points, looking, authoring, negotiating back out, well defended by the GGs. And here come Steinick and Ottawa. Transition. And Jock will go back to Steinick, who's been the control of the maestro, sliding on the court. And nothing but a dead end, and recovered by the Citadel. And this goes out of bounds, and a bit of a disjointed... First minute of play for either side. No clean possession and no points yet. Well, and a turnover there once again. It'll be their 12th of the game there going in transition. And those are the ones you don't want to have. I mean, an Aaron pass into the paint, trying to force it or going baseline, that's one thing. But when you're coming out with numbers the other way, it's inexcusable. Back door. Good flash. Better finish. Gameta showing his real quality on the court, back up by five. Yeah, the size difference with the left-hand finish there as well, almost on our turnover there. So they just got to settle back in, eerily reminiscent of that first quarter. Almost same script for the Citadel. A minute 30 into this second half. Here's Kevin Seville. And Stajak there collapsing on Seville. He's been the hot hand, and this will be UCAP ball and a new 14 to work with. Well, and the difference there in that set is Newton doesn't have to pop out to the 3.9 for Lafollette in terms of the three-point shot. He does not respect it, so they cut off the dribble penetration and a turnover there. Dyak has been everywhere. There comes and Jock with a Euro. And that will be the other way as in Jock will be called for the foul going back for UCAM. I mean, up here is a bit slow motion seeing that coming in terms of the action there. You have to know you have a guy on the wing in that situation. It's a tough ask for the official to get that call in that situation, especially when he's been planted for what looked like basically a second and a half. Yeah, UCAM trying to launch their first attack of points in this second half. Here is Seville. A dribble handoff just playing a four out with one in the paint. Hydara Lafare with a two minute autograph. And they're down by three with eight to go. Well, a win pass on the other hand there. And that's with authority too. That's how you slice up a man to man. Three point lead south of eight. Both sides play man to man after seeing a heavy dosage of zone in the first half. And Jock against Hydara. They had some great battles with Sejap. 
and a whistle and a foul. Hydara will be called for the foul. First one of this quarter with 752 left, three point lead for Ottawa. Yeah, that's not one they want to have in that situation, but he's just trying to overreach in that situation. They've been good in terms of fouls so far, only five committed here, including to start this third quarter. This game might be over in 10 minutes. And back over to Newton again. They're laying a lot, a lot playing too inside the paint there. Newton, too strong, rebound Lafare. And here is Caillot back with it. 7.40 left in this third quarter. Play. So not a lot of crashing though by the GGs. You have three guys already back in transition to respect the seat of them. Dijon. Sayak on him. And here is Caillot. Six left in the shot clock for UCAP. But Caillot in the jungle and whistle and that will stop play. And this is going back the other way for Ottawa. That was a good switch off there defensively by the GGs in that set. But for the fifth year senior and Kevin Alto, he gets away with one there as his man beat him baseline. And back over it comes, and here is Brock Newton with it, scoring about 17 a game from Fergus, Ontario. Which you normally see, he's trying to set up the screen there, and then he's going to flash potentially inside. Newton pivoting, still pivoting. Alto now again with it on the right side, space to work with. Newton on interplay, and that is snatched away by Hydara. That's yeah, really quick release there. He probably could have thought about it and had a better option there. Hydara galloping with intent on his bike. Finding the back door, Lafare on the byline, and he will get out of the key on the twist and turn, up and over, and he can't finish that one, and you can a little slow the gates. The set by Gavenna just, again, cutting him off on the baseline there. And there's the seismic smash. Here comes the help. And the help from Seville. He gets the ball back two on two. Jean to his left, and he will slow down, uh, wait for the cavalry to show up. And here's Hadara with it. Hadara in the lane, up, whistle, fouled. And Hadara played with the uh, Montreal Lions in the CEBL last summer. And uh, well traveled with his basketball travails, and you see why he's one of the better players in Quebec. Well, and I mean, any guy that gets an opportunity at this level, partner, to play in the CBL, I mean, you're seeing a, what a great feeder program it is for youth sports in general, but the game just slows down so quickly for these guys. I mean, when you're playing against grown men and pros consistently, even for those two months, the game looks a lot different once you get back to the youth sport level. Seville out there along with Hadara. Hadara is the first free throw, and he's been illustrious for this Citadel team. And again, we were talking about off air. Mario Joseph, he brought these kids together. Seville, McFadden Jean, Alex Lochard, who's not playing, along with Eli Carrojo, they won a national title in the CCAA with Cejep Montmorency, led by Marco Beauchamp, who's actually here today watching his guys go. And there's that family unity of these kids growing up together, and here they are now playing against a very powerful Ottawa GG team. Well, Mario Joseph just said, it's like seeing my kids grow up before my very eyes from all these years. And Jock cannot finish that one. Rebounded to Cayo, and now you can, can get the lead on a converted field goal. Six left in this third quarter. Hydera! And one! Should just be, it'll be a deflection there, so it's going to count. Yeah. He's hitting it on the top as the ball is in its downward trajectory at this point, so the basket will count. No foul call. They'll go back to the soft full court man-to-man -man press just to kind of stymie their offensive side and Brock Newton will get the ball but Citadel for a team that has struggled at the line 67 percent on the year they have been money this afternoon seven of seven so far so it still is a 40 39 lead and now they change it to 41 40. Oh Peter White Gennetta showing the confusion on the UCAM defending over there back up one Sort of cut in there, partner, but I mean, just the ability to sweep there and then jab him off. He respected him at first and then set him for turmoil. Cayo can't go anywhere. Seville rejected. And that goes back to UCAM with six left in the shot clock. So now you're starting to see some fireworks from one end to the other end. I mean, just the defensive tenacity is picking up for both sides, and we knew it was going to be a game of runs here, but both teams, again, they're just so evenly matched. Both coaches understood this coming into the contest. Again, it's going to come down possession by possession. This opening episode of the first four, Hydara, splash! Wow, that's disrespectful because he called off the help in that situation, said, nah, I got this. They're now up to 39% for the land beyond. Makes good on his call there, too. Newton's got space. Newton with the Euro. 
Ottawa back up by, or I beg your pardon, back to a 44 game here. Well, the whole entire bench wanted to try a travel called in that situation. They're still frustrated about it, but you just got to keep playing here. It's just back and forth here. Grimaud about to come back in for Ottawa. Hydara, whistle on the play. And it feels like now in this second half that it's going to be Behadi Hydara who might be the central focus, central figure for this UCAM offense. Well, he's second in this game coming in, and he had 10 points at the half. He's already at seven in this third quarter. So they've made the adjustments. Civil's been held scoreless, but Hidero has been the difference maker. We're not at 44 with the timeout on the floor. Timeout on the floor. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's National Championship game on CBC Sports. You came up by four. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Feel every hit, goal, and celebration as if you're standing right on the sideline, immersing you in the game like never before, bringing heart-pounding action directly to millions of fans. We deliver unparalleled simplicity and tailor-made digital broadcasting solutions crafted to make you feel every moment in a way like never before. Our passionate team ensures your message reaches audiences reliably every time. Proudly Canadian, we bring a touch of innovation and our passion to the world today. ISI Live, be there. The 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship is headed to the campus of Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, March 14th to the 17th. Tournament packages and single game tickets are now on sale. Click on the QR code at the bottom of your screen or visit galesdockuniversitytickets.com to order your tickets today, the 2024 U Sports Men's Volleyball Championship in Kingston, Ontario. Chase the glory, and Queens is the beautiful campus. They had the Vanity Cup last November, which the University of Montreal won over UBC. They're hosting this event, and they're going to host the Vanity Cup later on this year. I mean, it's a credit to Stu Lang as well, who has just dropped so much money into Richardson Stadium and that entire program. But I mean, between the two universities you mentioned, them in Manitoba, both have been vis busy hosting uh, conference championships as of late. And right now, UCAM's trying to get busy with the points for, and that was not the direction of choice as this goes back over to Ottawa. 4.39 left here. We've seen some quite inventive play from both teams here, and Ottawa has really collapsed on some of the big hitters on UCAM so far in possession. Well, the thing is, they, they're starting to collapse the pain, the pain efficiently but the issue is Hedera has already gone off for seven in the third quarter alone he's got a game high 17 Brock Newton at 16. Here's Newton coming in the paint with the right short rebound Hydara and it feels like Hydara might go the distance today. Seville down the left side as he will await for reinforcements we're tied at 44 piece here from St. Foix. They've gone back to that four out looking to slip on the inside. Kayo cannot slip that through Rebound, Newton, and that's going back to Ottawa as Cole Newton will bring it back up and a chance for the lead once more for the Gigi's. Kulamala against Seville. And Jock is caught in two minds, and that will not go through. Rebounded by Seville, two on two. Louis Jean down the right side, one on one. Going up against Newton, and he is fouled with 3.49 left in this third quarter play. He stood tall and he made the right read there, but then once he had to slip under that left hand, just gets a reach around in that situation. You look at the other side in the offensive set there, I mean, Tadora a couple times crashing into the paint, and he's been key defensively on the help as well for the GGs here, but looks like a warning for both sides here as the officials are going to talk things over for a second. A little uh, three-way conspiracy conversation with the three officials on display. 44-44, 3.49 left in this third quarter of play. Conspiracy? Like what? Well, you know, they talk amongst each other, right? Yeah, maybe they're asking what's, where we're going for dinner later. Well, you know, the the, uh, the biggest topic amongst the uh, non-Quebecers who are off in this lovely province is the poutine selections. Uh, poutine is yes. a very, uh, it's, a, it's almost a symbolic food here in the province of Quebec. Poutine I know. or poutine? Poutine. 
It's in, yeah. It's so, in. okay, so around the university, partner, where am I going later today? I, you know, I, I'm not from this part of town. I'm from Montreal, so I would give you better options in Montreal if you were in that part of the city. Old Montreal? I uh, know, you would go into the uh, more uh, tougher areas of Montreal. That's okay. Lato Montreal has some good slots. And right now, at a good spot, is Quincy Lujan at the line for the Citadel, makes the first free throw. Still perfect at this point, too. I mean, this team, again, three free throws only attempted by the GGs at this point. And now you see on the second one here, still remain nylon from the line. And UCAM, during the regular season, had two games of 19 May free throws. And right now, they're up by two. And here is the GGs back with his Newton. It is Cole Newton. And the hot hand, Gameta, with it. And now trying to get around Cayo. Newton in the block. Newton got that one back to 46 apiece. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, they're shooting 45% almost from the field, 44 to be exact, but it hasn't felt like this in this third quarter. And up until that point, the city then were up 11 6 in this third quarter, make that 11 8 now. Diaz, a 48% three point shooter for the Citadin. Here is Hidara with it. Gameta on him, eyeball to eyeball, dancing, going to the left, back to the right, nowhere to go. Well defended by Kulamala, and here comes the GGs, and a chance for the lead. Transition layup it is a plus, and they're back up by two. And that's that off look against Diaz in that situation. Thought he was going to make the extra pass, and then just a little separation there goes off glass for two. There's got to be a winner, and there has to be a loser. Both teams have been playing like winners so far today. Louis Jun, double team. Corner pocket, extra pass. Hidara around one, Hidara around two, and he's got the two, and they're back up to a 48 48 game. I mean, it's not skating weather here in Quebec City, but he sure made him look like that on that sweep from right to left. And Jock back out, and here come the Gigi's once more. And that's pushed away, repelled out by Louis Jean off the pass from Gameta. And with 219 left, a double sub coming in for the Gigi's. Onto the court is they'll bring in Stajic along with O2 once more. Uh, Stajic's just been the energizer buddy for this team in terms of pushing the pace, active hands defensively. Gameta, you want to see him take that shot more often. He averages 11.5 points per game, 39% from the field, but both teams are going to think about this a little longer. Timeout called on the floor. Timeout called on the court. You're watching the 2024 U Sports National Men's Basketball event on CBC Sports, live from the University of Laval. Stay tuned. Welcome back here to Laval University. Great Campbell Mocon. Game one of four. This game hopefully is a sign of things for the rest of the day for the entire tournament. That it might come down to the last roll of the dice for whoever wins this game or games throughout the course of the weekend. Well, and you're saying, partner, how everyone's been playing like a winner here so far. I mean, both teams badly want this. And being the open game, it sets the precedent for what kind of intensity we're going to expect the rest of the weekend here. <laughs> no question about that. And right now, this game has not been accepted to the rule. It's been great drama. And now Newton brings it down on the wrap by two once again. Well, oh, that's just a defensive relapse there in that situation. I mean, they just got caught looking at the inbound there, and then just a little slip. That's way too easy out the break. Yeah, Cole Newton's had a fabulous few minutes of play for the GGs. And this will be UCAP ball as Ottawa Bench trying to prove the case in a court-like setting that it was their ball. Well, Brock, the other one, at 18 right now, still no one in double figures. He's 9 of 14 from the field. And you look at Hadera, he's got 9 points in this third quarter. Kevin Civil has remained scoreless at 11 points, but Hadera has been the star of the show. 3 of 5 from the land beyond, 67% from the field, 4 rebounds as well. Lafarge back over. Here is Hadera, the hot hand for the Citadel. Against Newton. Hadera! Missing that rebound, Stayak, and here come the GGs. 
Ottawa with 150 left in this quarter play. Kulamala, space to work with, deflected away out by Hadara. Remains Ottawa ball with 16 left in the shot clock. And you see Civil getting it done defensively there with the help and the paint. And even though he hasn't had a good scoring quarter, they remain committed to each other. They talk about the brotherhood, the leadership of this team. Guys who have won it at the collegiate level now at the national stage for the university side. They're playing well. And a foul will be called on Kayo uh, against the bigger Newton and Brock Newton, who will now have a chance to go to the line for two free throws coming up here for Ottawa. And they're up by two. Yeah, it's the first time at the line this evening or this afternoon. We'll call it a 52% free throw shooter. Not the most uh, endearing stat line for Mr. Brock Newton, who, again, during the regular season, he talked about what he did. He had nine points and fouled out against Brock. And we talked about that streak of uh, points. He had a streak of 12 games and 11 plus points during the regular season campaign for the Gigi's. Look at the rebounding battle. It's a one difference right now with the Citadel. Two for the Citadel at 21 to 19 as turnover there. But talked about the Gigi's being out rebounded by 18 and outscored 43 13 in that second half in that quarterfinal loss 81 58 to Brock. Third quarter, we're not at 13 aside. And Carol Joe come in for Cayo. Three-point lead in this first ha third quarter play. The first half was full of twists and turns. And right now, the twists and turns continue in this game. And just meeting them right across the timeline there every time. Nothing easy in terms of walking into your look. Kulamala missing the three. Rebound, Newton. New 14 for the GGs. Newton going up strong. Denied by Lafarey. Just impeccable timing of this guy to be able to read that situation and help out Civil. Fourth block of the day, using his telescopic arms on that play. Garajo, who's not had a serving game so far. Seville was hot in the second quarter, and that lacked any purchase on that shot from him. And now Ottawa can extend this lead of three to maybe five or six. Well, it should have been a travel call there, but they'll settle with it with the ball in their hands. Sayek, back door, Newton. Acrobatic and emphatic, and they're up now by three. But in, in the intention on the pick and roll in that situation and waited out on the left bounce pass with the right hand inside. As you mentioned, partner, just very athletic finish there. Lujan. Could he get going late in this third quarter? Seville. In the paint. Tough shot. Better defended by Ottawa. And here they come with 18 left in the game clock. Shot clock is now off. And they're going to be the last action of this third quarter of play. Well, they won the foul, but they, they've been letting it go all afternoon in the paint. And I honestly hope that's the case for most of this tournament. It's, it's great to see these guys make those plays. Newton. Newton at the death. Got it. And now they're up by seven going to the fourth quarter. We're through 30. Round three goes to Ottawa. Could they win round four and punch the ticket to the semifinals? Stay tuned here. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Men's Nationals at Laval University on Team Six Sports. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. <laughs> Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Hey, U Sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visit the shop.usports.ca to profit of the promotion of the week of the collection Nike Team. The 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship is headed to the campus of McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, March 14th to 17th. Tournament packages and single game tickets are now on sale. Click the QR code at the bottom of your screen or visit marauders.ca slash tickets to order your tickets today. The 2024 U Sports Women's Volleyball Championship in Hamilton, Ontario. Chase the glory. And uh, I discovered with uh, you, Greg Campbell, that is your neck of the woods. 
Hamilton, Ontario. The waterfall the capital hosting. of the world. I, I found out Stony Creek is the ice cream capital of Canada. I mean, we get more and more specific, but that's my end of town as well. So yeah, you got the eastern part of the city there. I no, learned a lot about Southern Ontario, my friend. It, it's a great place. I mean, people talk trash about it all the time, but from someone who's born and raised there, it's an excellent city and McMaster, an excellent host. I mean, they've, they've been, you know, hosting the men's nationals for a number of years. Volleyball program's outstanding there. And you got, look at this right now, right off the bat, a high 2-3 zone. It was a 1-2-2 to the end. Could this stymie the Citadel? Garojo is going to be called for the foul. And right now, the lights are shining bright on Ottawa and exposing UCAM on some of the possessions of late. Well, and we talk about possession by possession. They've outscored them by two in the first quarter, one in the second quarter. A 4 0 run in that last minute there meant they won the third quarter 17 to 13. And those are the kind of plays you just have to make at the end of the day. I mean, the Citadel are shooting well, 43%, but the GG's up to 47% from the field now. So well, right now, you talk about the uh, beautiful piece of machinery. The Newton boys have been quite the forceful duo so far in this third quarter. We'll see if that carries over the fourth quarter. I mean, I want to make some really bad science puns there now that you mentioned New the name Newton, but I'll hold off those for now. Stajak is fouled, and he will go to Ryan Joseph. Is a bit surprised by that call on Cayo as he gives a death stare to the officials on the court. He's been great. I mean, five points. He only accounts for three assists at this point, but two or four from the field. But he, he's just so good with what he does in the half court there, understanding the correct read. And he'll get to stare down the rim on the first one on his own here as the suit then talk it over just beyond the arc. Yeah, Stajak had 17 and 6 against Brock in the loss. And you can sort of see he's that glue, the conductor of the orchestra that it is when it comes to the ball control and just reading the play out there for Ottawa. I mean, it's, it's just, it's elite guard play. This is what the game of basketball has become at this point. Outside of the odd guys in the NBA, if you do not have elite guard play, especially at this level, it's going to be a long night as they went to the 2-1-2 two, two, full court press. Great break there, though, by the see of them. UCAM is wobbly at the knees. And now Ottawa trying to administer the blowout, bl final blow on them right now in this fourth quarter. Louis Jun and over Kulamala from the corner pocket. Missed by Carajo, rebound by Otu, and here come the GGs with nine to go. Newton rolled the dice there, letting him think about that shot. He, he took it that time, but you cannot let that happen. Cole Newton, and this is going back to UCAM with 8.59 left. And you see the Ottawa bench not happy with the call going against them. It's the right call in that situation, though. He's, he just rides him out defensively, and then he stands tall, and it's off him last. So it's been a call that's been consistent all afternoon, and Ottawa's going to continue to look at that 2-1-2 full-court press here. Who could be a poacher of points for the Citadel with 8.58 left in their season. They lose. They are done at the chance of winning the national title here in Laval. Well, civil has been stymied in the second half. He led the team with 11 points at the half. He's still scoreless. And he is still scoreless. And that's a rebound for Stajic. And here come the Gigi's. And now their tails are up. They're hunting and hounding. Looking for more points up by nine. Could they get their first double-digit lead of the day? Stajic. Newton in the lower block against Cayo. Using his deltoids. Going left to right. Back to the right. To the left. In for two. And now the first 10 plus point lead for Ottawa today. And if I can recall, partner, that's the first time I've seen a finish with the left hand as well. So he finally gets that to go and they'll send that high 2 3 zone. Hidara, Diaz, extra pass again for Louis Judd. Someone's got pulled the trigger. Seville, nowhere to go. Diaz from the flats. And that rims out. Put back, too strong. And the forensic touch from Cayo gets it down to nine. No, third time's the charm. Uh, also, I mean, the Academy Awards have already passed. Have they passed already? No, this weekend. This All weekend. right, well, he put his nomination there as Civil's going to draw one in the block in that situation, in the size matchup. So they're attacking Diaz once again. So they, they know Newton's look is coming here, but now he's setting up and going to that left hand, and that's where it becomes dangerous. Pair of substitutions for the GGs. We'll see if UCAM has dare in their game right now. It's Lafayette coming for Cayo. Try and match the dreadnoughts out there as Carol Jo about to come back in. And back in for the Gigi's is cool all along with Gameta. So we've seen the roll of decks of options going deep in the bench options so far in this game. A timeout called the turnovers. A story for the Citadens. 20 turnovers, 22 points for the Gigi's. Ottawa leads 59-50 over UCAM as we are now late in this fourth, early in this fourth quarter here. So in this situation as we speak, 
in this situation that is on the courts. UConn's got to come up. UConn wants to come with some stops here, but stay tuned here. You're watching the U Sports Fall 8 on CBC Sports. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Hi, I'm here for my 3.30 with a Mr. Greer. Of course, we've confirmed coverage. The patient will be right with you. Dr. Patel, the patient will see you now. Health coverage should put you first. Only Green Shield combines your health care and benefits coverage all in one place. Green Shield, better health for all. Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. The next game uh, for today will be Winnipeg against Queens. They're coming up next in quarterfinal action here from St. Paul, Quebec. You can watch this on CBC Sports with this great duo that we have today. It's been fun working with you partners so far and how this has been played out. We've had a fun game so far. And right now, Ottawa's been having quite the fun in this matchup, and Gometic cannot finish that at the lip of the cup. Well, fun because it's only been one game together. Whether you're sick of me by the end of Sunday evening, <laughs> we're about to find out. And here is Louis Jean trying to get this team back in, and he does in the jump with a down by touchdown. That's a <laughs> slick little cross over there, and then will pull up Jay at the free throw line. Just quick hitter there, and now settle back in. But every possession, I mean, you've got to be methodical. And a little hand check underneath there is going to be called against Diaz, who's been on the wrong end of a couple calls in the last, we'll call it 90 seconds here. Diaz, first year player from Champlain St. Labyrinth and the Sage Up ranks. And you talk about this Ottawa team, they are full of veteran style and profile out here. They did play Laval in the Laval tournament back in the holiday season. Took out Winnipeg, took out Laval, went 2 and 1, lost St. FX, who lost to Dalhousie. The West playoffs. You want to talk about how good this team is? I mean, August doesn't matter for a lot of people, but they beat Hartford 65 52 back on August 22nd. I mean, this team has experience. Here is Newton with plenty of experience. Newton. And the clank does not go in. Rebounded by Diaz as he gets off. And now it is a seven point gap between Ottawa and UCAM. Louis Jeune. He's got Lafrey in the lower block. Lojen is a whistle, and this will be called against Ottawa. Newton's beside himself on that call, but you, you look at the shooting numbers. He leads all scorers with 23 right now, but he's doubled up in terms of shot attempts. The next closest guy to him in this case, in which it's one of his teammates, but he's 11 of 18 to Jor's attempted nine field goals. So, I mean, no other GG has hit double figures yet on the turnover. Louis Jeanne losing the possession, recovered by Ottawa. Here's Stajic once more. Stajic in control of the game as we're south of seven. They're up by seven. Slowly working that paint. And Jock, short. Second by the cherry. No, third by the cherry is short. Good call. Whistle, and that was a bit delayed, and Lafare might be called for that. And now go to the line as Ottawa. I mean, you just got to box him out at some point in this matter. I mean, you can't allow the same guy who's been isolated in the paint against three defenders to get two consecutive looks after the initial one. He'll head to the line to uh, try and patch out the lead here with 6.35 to go. Right now for you, Cam, we have to get the attacking army back on the front foot. Ottawa has done that in the second half. Their adjustments have been a little bit better than you, Cam, so far. Well, Civil's still scoreless, and that's the story of this. You know, he was the reason why they were in this game in the first half, and it felt like after that 8-0 run to start for the GGs that things were unraveling, and he was able to settle them in, but it's been the other way defensively. Missed there. Carroll showed the rebound, and here comes... Hydara, and they have to push this agenda now down by seven. Carajo. Louis Jun in orbit, watched by Stajic. Going towards his left. Hydara pulled the trigger. Too strong. Rebound, Stajic. 
He's been a magnet with the ball in his hands. The roll match in his hands have been second to none so far today. Well, and the way he's able to box out in that situation and gets and bigger than him, and this is where it pays off and it kills the Citadel dead because they're in the bonus situation now. So uncontested set there. They are not able to get the offensive rebound and injury or salt to the injury at the end of the day, and now two free throws upcoming. Stoyak. Ruthless at the line, one for one. And now this is back up by eight with 6.13 left. Well, they needed that. They're now 50%. They were four of nine before that. You look at the other side, the Citadel cleaned out nine and nine from the line. Well, 50 is a pass in school. Depends what level. I mean, you know, for some of these guys that are third, fourth year, just like when you take university classes, I mean, maybe it's that 65 is your final passing grade. Well, my GPA wasn't at that level. And here is. UCAP trying to get back to the level of success in the first half. Seville for three. That rims out, and they've gone cold on the long-range shots. As long as you're not using chat GPT for your answers, you're a good partner. Ah, uh, there you go. Kulamala deflected back over to the left. Here's Hydara behind the back. Hydara trying to find an outlet, and he will go over to Louis Jun on the switch of play. 5.40 left in his ball game. Louis Jun. Against Newton, the jumper, tough shot, rebound. UCAM can't get to it, and now here come the GGs. They are in control of this chapter. Seville, Kulamala, and he got the two points right there. Now it starts with Newton on the switch off on the other side, riding over the screen, and then good help on the inside there when there was a smaller matchup. So they're reading everything correctly right now defensively. Ottawa has been pinging, and right now the, G the Citadel have been lacking. Garajo. Seville. Lafarge thought about it. He would now go for option B. Whistle. And this is a charge going the other way. And you have to think now, Greg, that this is starting to slip away from the Citadel with five to go. Well, it's a drop of the elbow when he's trying to go into the paint there. Again, manageable at this point at 11. But in terms of the three point shot, they've hit only 29%. So timeout, Mario Joseph. They've got to figure it out here quick. Timeout call 63 52 lead Ottawa. They're up. You're watching the 2024 U Sports Miss Nationals presented by Michelob on CBC Sports. Welcome back here. Ottawa back on possession, up by 11. That's been the biggest lead for either side today. And now great for UCAM. They got to get this, and they do on the break. Here's a press. Here's Louis Jeune on the go on his bike, and he's fouled. And this might be their course of action, getting to the free throw line, stop the clock. Yeah, they're just going to have to be more aggressive in their half-court defensive sets here. I mean, they've gone to soft full-court man-to-man a couple times, and then that time they start trapping them with the diamond set up there. Good job by Stajic with the hard foul. He's got nine points right now, but it's up to three fouls now. So a couple guys in fouls, troubles, or have to be aware between him and Tajor at three apiece. And then you look at the other side, outside Samuel Kyle with three, no one else more than two. Though he's doing both free throws. He played with the Alliance in the CPL last season. And now they're putting the pressure points on the GG's ball handlers, and they will break that with ease and now get back into their set. I mean, it's just over aggressive at first, but if you can take a second to breathe, then in most cases like that, you'll be able to beat the press. Down low, Cole Newton, double team, snatched away by Seville. Could this be the run now for UCAM? And here is Seville going from one end to the other end. Finding Louis Jeune. 
Seville, near flash, he needs it, got it. Finally, 11 points in the first half, and it took him till 4.14 in the fourth quarter to get his first bucket of the second half. And now, they see the narrow finish in the alley. The finish not there. Laforet with the rebound. And if you're Ottawa, just, just settle defensively at this point. A couple miscombobulations haven't gone your way, but with four minutes, still plenty of time. You can try to find the accelerator, accelerator they have. Big possession now for the Citadel. Could the Gigi's come up with a stop? Four left in the shot clock. Seville from St. Catherine. Missing the three, and Lafarette can't get to it. It goes to the first row, and back to Ottawa we go. And he's, he's got four three-pointers now. Four of eight from the Lambion for 14 points. Five of 13 from the field, but Hedera's got 19. And then on the other side, Newton with 23 again. No one in double figures besides Newton at this point for the GGs. 2-2-2-1 two, 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 press here for the Citadel. They break it. Newton now back in. Slipped away. Caught that in two minds. Here is a Chuck! With a two-handed autograph. And authority again. They wanted the travel there, but there was a strip on the play on Newton initially. So good no call by the officials. A point lead again for the GGs. Louis Jean tripped up by Newton, and that again will stop clock for the Citadel. He's saying he's arguing, trying to in his favor that they're reaching around him as he's trying to get into the hole, but not going to win that battle with the officials as it looks like. Not another timeout called here, this time by the GGs. Timeout called on the court, 65 57 lead. Ottawa up on UCAP from St. Foix, Quebec. Game one of four. Now you talk about now, Greg Campbell, how this played. Uh, UCAP has found a bit of verve, a bit of guile, uh, more attacking than before, but the racetrack started to become shorter here for them, and they have to break it down to smaller segments. Well, and you're seeing they're starting to gamble here with the full court press, and that's one way, you know, they, they've shot relatively well in this game at this point. I mean, in terms of percentage, is it has been horrible, just a hair under 40%, but just you're starting to see some desperation being pulled out by Mario Joseph and his team here. And, the full court press is the one way to do it. You start getting guys overthinking the moment, tight quarters, close game. Maybe they force a couple of turnovers as they have in that situation. It's whether they can convert at the end of it. 13 turnovers for the uh, the GGs, 13 points for the Citadel, and the other way, 21 and 22 respectively. Up next, Queens, Winnipeg. The Gales, I guess the Westman, and you know Winnipeg fairly well. That's going to be a tough matchup for Queens. I mean, we talk about theatrics, and we'll get into that in the next broadcast. But, you no know, late bank shot to win the OUA title for Queens. First title in, I believe it was, what, 57-ish years? Well before we were born. Yes. Put it that way. Maybe well before both of us were born, combined almost. And now, in this game, it is Lafayette back with it. Could the UCAM see the net pull off a smash and grab against Ottawa with 3.10 left? Seville, Lafare, nowhere to go. Lafare, the soft touch, and they get it down to uh, 65 59 And he's got six points now. Three players in double figures for the Citadel. Not relenting on that full 2 2 1 press. Thick of the three minutes left. Plenty of jeopardy and dare to go in this matchup here. 0 2 with it. Six up in the shot clock. Up in the air, taken away by UCAM. Here come the Citadel. Hydara on his bike, going from one end to the other, other end, and he is fouled and will go to the line for two. That's Kevin Sibyl who gets it done again defensively. He's got 26 steals on the season, but just active hands on the dribble penetration and then a foul the other way. He's only got three points in the second half, but he's remained committed defensively, and that's what you want from your veteran leadership. Test of, test of nerve now for Hydara, Hadi Hydara, who played at George Mason University. Came back home to Montreal and now at the line. Could a flair player come up with two critical free throws with 2.38 left in this ballgame? This is a 65% free throw shooter for the fifth year senior. And he misses. That's their first miss of the afternoon, too. They started 11 of 11 for a team, as we mentioned, fourth in the province at 67% as a team. They make about 12 a game, which was number 34 in the nation. This is a bigger one. And he hits that one. They're down by five. 2.30 left in this matchup. Who's going on to round number two, Ottawa or UCAM? And they go to 2 2 1 press once again. Just got to move that ball quickly. The more you think about it, the more time you give them to set up. Newton 
Here's Stajic. He's got space. And he's got the layup. Stajic thought about it for a second where he should pull that ball out, but the C's open and kisses it for two. Good read. Seven-point lead. Hydara. And that's taken away by Ottawa. Good block. The second of the game only for the GGs that comes off their star offensive player. Newton again. We are now approaching two left in this ballgame. Newton against Seville. Using his back. High low. He goes back to Stajak once more. The calming force for this Ottawa offense. Stajak in. Stajak out. 0-2 for three. Right down King Edward. And that might be the tag on the RTQ cap. Late in this ballgame down by 10. Uh, you can get it from a guy that clips under a quarter for 24% from the lay and beyond. So it looks like they thought the timeout was called miscommunication with the table in that situation. They're going to put him back on the court right away. And for Mario Joseph, this racetrack is running short as Ottawa is heading over the hills with a key potential win if they hold on up by 10. And now we look at it this way, Greg. It is go time for the Citadel. The element of caution has to be abandoned by them now in this ball game. Yeah, it's going to be reckless in their full court press at this point. The matter is whether they want to settle for the inside two point look or whether they start forcing threes to try and cut the margins quicker. But a, a timely three, I mean, to say the least. This uh, Gigi's not well known, to say the least. I mean, 18th in the OEA, that's right at the bottom at 27% for the Lambion. They're 33% in this game, but that fourth three pointer couldn't come at a better time. Ottawa lost on February 24th to Brock, and they've gone almost two weeks without playing high level competitive basketball. But right now, they're going to be perhaps one win close towards a national title as they are now a minute 51 away from doing so against UCAP. Well, they got outscored by 30 in that contest, that quarterfinal loss, and they're, they're winning the second half here right now, 32-25, so a seven-point margin after winning the first quarter by two and the second quarter by one. So they've been consistent. They've won every quarter, and it looks like it may hold true here with a buck 45 to go. This will be the ultimate great escape for the Citadel. Louis Jun, the teardrop, back heel, rebound, and that might be it for UCAP. And they're going to play the foul game now, which puts Ottawa at the line with 138 left in this matchup. And again, Ottawa, a sublime game plan in the second half that took away the big hitters. Well, it was Kevin Civil, as we mentioned. He's just quiet third and fourth quarters. A total of three points after having 11 in the first half. And then Hedera, as he goes flush on the first there. Hedera's mm -hmm. got 20, but really they haven't got that third option consistently going. And they've limited it to one player clicking at a time. They rolled the dice and then rolled effectively. Stajic, an assassin out there. Ice cold in his veins. And now here comes Hydara. Newton knocking him off and oh. a whistle to play. Se and he's a 79% free throw shooter, but that was a huge game of cat and mouse there. Newton loses that one. Well, with 96 ticks left on the clock, it gives UCAM a, a lifeline, albeit though a very slim lifeline of hope to get back in this matchup. Well, that's one of those things when you pick up the ball because you want to save as much clock as possible on that. Just went for broke on the sell out there, and Madero was able to absorb the contact. 11 point lead, 96 seconds left to go. Great Campbell, Mulcon, game one of four. We got Ottawa, Winnipeg coming up, a Can West OUA clash. Is that Dima Border battle? Ontario, Manitoba? Uh, not technically, but it is a border battle provincially. But I mean, if we're talking about exact locations, no. That's going to be a tough monster because I mean Winnipeg's got three guys that can go at any moment and then Queens on the other end have one of the players in the year and the hero that won the OUA championship too who's just named player of the week in Silas and new to miss that free throw he's been brilliant this second half you think about a quiet but efficient game Cole Newton had that in the second half and now he is spacing the control of the rebounding and the tough play that he brought on the court made a difference for, you, uh, for Ottawa well, and all the attention is on Brock as you mentioned but he, he just leads by example and you see him settle back in here with an 11 point lead Hydara finger roll is good they're now down by nine Nice looking shot. 24 is a game high right now. They're trapping. Stajic, cul-de-sac. Saved. Hydara. 
Here comes Carajo. In for two. Now they're down by seven. Timeout call. 118 left in this fourth quarter. And now there's a glimmer of hope for the Citadel. They caught Ottawa napping and punched them on the two-point call. Well, the thing is they put them in the perfect spot there for the execution shot there, which is the pocket corner there. He's thinking about it, could get rid of the ball, and then he tried to throw off of the active hands there, almost like when you have the football they whipped at you, you know, 60, 70, 70 kilometers an hour, just stuck it right to him. And the 15th turnover leads to the 16 points now. So again, you roll the dice, you got in your stop, they just need a handful more of those. I mean, it's a lot to ask, but each turnover, a good timeout called there to give them a mental break for the GG players, but each turnover creates just a little bit of a seed of doubt next time you inbound that ball. Well, right now, both teams are off their clip of points for UCAM has hit about 79 a game this past regular season. Ottawa just under 80 a game. But right now, the most important thing on the scoreboard is Ottawa is up by seven. So how do they navigate through this whole process with the pressure coming in? But decisions have to be made quick in the full court press. Cuts have to be made quickly. James Darun right now asking for the ball to be advanced here, and that's the one thing you get in this rule set when you call a timeout as you avoid that full court pressure, you can advance it to the half court. So they'll give him, they'll buy him at least an opportunity on the inbound here. And now 14 left in the shot clock on top of that. So 14 left in the clock. It gives Ottawa a bit of breathing space on the geography of the map. Open space. And Jock might kill off UCAM on that finisher. Wow, that was impressive because there's a switch off from Newton there that freed him up on the pocket or the wing side opposite there. Hydara and that ball slip. It goes back to Ottawa. And with 69 seconds left. It's no longer a hill, but it mounted the climb for the Citadel. Yeah, you saw him look up at the score clock there for a second as well. Just kind of disgusted in that situation. Trying to buy a call here as well, but we we'll switch out a little offensive defense right now. Ottawa looking like the ball given away. And here comes UCAM, and here goes Ottawa. And again, Ottawa's keeping UCAM alive with a bit of a of a heart and mouth moment here with some moves of anger going against their staff. That's just discombobulated. They don't know where they want to go here on the full court press break, and they're just being a little overzealous in the passes. Kyle Joe's three, and he's fouled for three. I mean, I was going to say that's a good close by Newton there, but he must have clipped him on the wrist at the end there. So most important thing is that it's not that there's three free throws, it's that the clock has stopped now. And Carajo at the line. And he has the first free throw of the day in this sequence. Three times led team in scoring at 26 against Bishops. Had six points, 11 rebounds on one of eight shooting in the Quebec final last weekend. And he's finding his stroke now, but he missed some key shots, though, in the second, third quarter of this ballgame. I mean, they're still 16 of 17 from the line, partner, and I mean, they're just going to battle it out to the very end here. So, doesn't matter what happened before, you got to put it behind you. He goes flush for all three, and now two possession game. A minute left. Pressure's on. Long ball up ahead. The 50 50 won by and Jock, and now they want to control the narrative. Deflected away, Lujin has got it back, they're down by six, 40 ticks to go. Lujin will take it to the hoop, whistle, travel. And they got stacked in that pocket corner again. It's the one look they're giving them right off the bat, and that Hail Mary was answered, but they got to try to set up some sort of full courts Hail Mary here right off the bat. And, and Ottawa will break it open, and here they come, two on one. And they want to kill off more seconds, which is valuable to the cause than the points as we speak. And they will stop clock with 36.7 left. Smart there, because what they do is they flash right to that free throw area. Then because you've attacked the teeth of that press in that situation, you're just able to turn one way to the wing and then off to the races. But good discipline there by not going for the two on one. It's definitely the time, however, doesn't pay off on the first missed free Not throw. Not the right choice of free throw shoes. Cole Newton was 33% from the line this past season. Not the best numbers, but he's one for two in that situation. I mean, it's been a struggle this afternoon. I mean, they're shooting under 58% in the game now, 10 of 17. 
And Hadara falling on the ground, whistle, another travel. And that might do it their partner. I mean, Matt's back for 24th turnover now, and every time it's accounted for one point directly at this point. You see him hanging his head in frustration there as in the last two possessions, same call happened here. I think there's a spot on the floor here. A little, need a little cleaning. Stajak will do a two for one here with the perspiration on the court as he will clean it up for the. Uh, get this man a job. He does everything. Well, they might put it on on his uh, when he graduates. The CV point guard, floor cleaner, and it is uh, groundskeeper. Oh, it's floor floor general. Yeah. Floor general, floor, maybe. That might be a better option. Nice, nicer term. And here's O2 again. He'll break through. Seville on the foul. 27.5 left. And to ice this game away. And for UCAM, for the RCQ, they had two teams coming in. And one will go down with one left in Laval. And OUA will have at least one through with two more to go. Well, and the difference being now, too, is that the other representative here has got to take on the number one seed in this tournament as an 80% free throw shooter misses on the first. So again, still signs of life here. But it's a, it's a tough ask, and you see how evenly these two teams have been matched, but Ottawa's just been a tad more consistent over four quarters. Miss, counter with the rebound. It's go time now, 24 seconds left in this ball game. A lot of time wasted right now for Kayo. Nowhere to go, he's got an open space. Kayo in, that killed off 10 seconds though. Stein, fouled by Carrojo. And that's a tough two as well. I mean, they, they want to give him that two-point look and chase him off the three-point line. However, as you mentioned there, the amount of time they just killed to get that shot, valuable at this point. And now you send Stajak back to the line. Yeah, time is now a valuable courtesy for the Citadin. This race is about to be run as Carrojo will be called for his fifth, I believe, or is his fourth personal. Right now, the scoreboard has four, but he's going off right now. As McFanjean will come in for the seat that end. No subs for Ottawa. Both teams in the bonus the rest of the way. Uh, it says four here on the official stat line. And for this core of Carajo, Seville, Lochard, McFanjean, Quincy Louisjeune, and uh, Hydera, uh, they're going to come up empty at the Nationals. And that was the reason why they brought back the band. To have this last dance, but it will be an empty one for them on this Friday afternoon. I mean, they, they will get to play again tomorrow to see if they can get into the consolation final fifth place game on Sunday, but obviously not the look you want if you're Mario Joseph and company. I mean, a two the coach of the year this past year and who won also a gold medal with Team Quebec at the Canada Games in 2001, but that Quebec team was unbelievable. They had some dudes on that team. I remember watching that, and that was a roof. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough pill to swallow. You you agree, like you said, to come back for one year, put it all on the line here, and then to go out in the first game of the tournament. It's a tough pill to swallow, to say the least. Not and beat the league champions as well. Not the easiest right now. 15 seconds left in this ballgame. They're down by seven. Seville, the captain of the ship, will go down with the ship. Ten left in this ballgame. Seville, Coyotes three. Rims out. Delight for Ottawa, despair for UCAB. Ottawa will advance to the final four. And for UCAB, they hope to finish off in a strong note tomorrow, maybe Sunday afternoon. Three players in double figures. Brock Newton leads the GGs with 23. Stajak ends up with 15. Tajor ends up with 11. Adara with 24, a game high, but Sybil held to only three points in the second half despite four Citadel ending up in double figures. The turnovers, I think, the story of this game. 24 turnovers committed by the Citadel led to 23 points for the GGs. Regimented defending, robust numbers by the team from Ottawa, and they now advance to the final four. They'll be in one half of the semifinal bracket. We'll find out the other half right now. But again, what a stunning Excellence displayed by Ottawa in that second half. Their adjustments were a bit better than UCAMS. The stones at the end of the day is what you want to put it for a team that got knocked out very early in the OUA playoffs at the quarterfinal level. To have that mentally go through your head, be outscored by 30 in the second half, and put on this kind of performance, it speaks to the veteran leadership. As their head coach said, just a bunch of guys who care about each other and know and come into work every day and put in the time and effort. Up next now, it is Mark Antoine Guerapi with the player of the game.
Le joueur du match du côté de Lucam, the player of the game for Lucam, le numéro 25, and number 25, Quincy Louis-Jeanne. So Quincy Louis-Jeanne, the player of the game for the Citadel, and uh, Et le joueur du match numbers, du côté des GGs, points, the GGs, the GGs players of the player of the game, le numéro 11, number 11, Brock Newton. And right there, the brothers, Mr. Newton being the player of the game, Brock Newton, a marvelous game for him. They win this award here, presented by Le Nation. prochain match de la ronde, quart de finale présenté dans une trentaine de minutes opposera so l'équipe uh, classée uh, septième, Ottawa, les Westmen uh, de l'Université de Winnipeg. À l'équipe classée deuxième, les Gales de l'Université Queens. The, the next quarter final matchup is starting in 30 minutes. Will feature the number seven seed, the University of Winnipeg, West Minute. Uh, that's the difference, sir, as he said. We knew points were going to be hard to come by, and outside of a square fourth quarter with 23 apiece, they just they won quarters one, two, and three, and it was singular possessions here and there that made the difference at the end of the day. But their defensive tenacity, the turnovers they're able to create for a team that was first in terms of points allowed per game at 67 and 11 steals a game, they held up true to their defensive tenacity here in game one. Indeed it did, and Ottawa looking like a, a team that no one will want to face, uh, an angry team. They may not say it openly, but they had a bitter taste in their mouth losing to Brock. You see the highlights right now. Losing to Brock probably feel their, their emotions to say, look, we've won Ontario. We need to win Canada. Let's lock in here the final two weeks, and if we get in, we're going to make a statement here. Well, that's the thing is you just want to get in the dance at this point, and for a team, again, they finished 19 and 3 in the regular season. There are no slouches in terms of the, the heavy dutiness of which is the OUA schedule. I mean, Queens had the home court advantage in terms of 19 and 3 record, but they were the part, and I mean, they, they fell short early, but they came out flying here in game one in the quarterfinals, and they put their stamp on the mark right here, right off the bat. Game one in the books. Ottawa will advance. UCAM will be in the backdoor bracket tomorrow in hopes of playing in the uh, fifth place game on Sunday afternoon. Up next, it is Queens Winnipeg. We'll have that coming up in 25 minutes from now from St. Paul, Quebec. Your sight of the 2024 Men's National Championship on CBC. Ottawa, they advance. And now we have Queens Winnipeg coming up in half an hour's time. We'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. It's that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo.